there are two movies coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, Glass Onion, the sequel to Knives Out, and also uh, The Menu, um, starring Ray Fiennes. Both of which are rather confounding reviewers because there's very little you can say about either of them, evidently, without giving away massive plot points and plot twists. Which, on the one hand, is making the reviews less than rewarding reading, but on the other hand, is making me very keen to see these movies. Because I love a good plot twist. And I hate a bad plot twist. And it is much easier to come up with a bad plot twist than it is a good plot twist. Regrettably, a lot of people, including a lot of filmmakers, seem to think that all you need for a plot twist is just a plot development that the audience don't see coming. Well, that's easy. Just throw them a curveball, introduce some new element of which there's been no hint thus far. You enjoying this erotic thriller? By the way, it's a video game somebody's playing! Fuck off! No, a good plot twist is not a plot point that you don't see coming. A good plot twist is a plot point that you realise you should have seen coming. And a really good plot twist is a moment at which you realise you've been watching a completely different story from the one you thought you were watching. So in celebration of the plot twist, and in no particular order, here are five of my favourite movie plot twists. Obviously, massive spoilers ahead for all of these. If I mention a title of a film that you have not seen and that you think you might want to see, get out of this video immediately. Number five, Planet of the Apes, the original and best, 1967. This is, of course, one of the most famous plot twists. I bring it up partly to celebrate the twist itself, but also to illustrate how it indirectly gave rise to possibly the worst movie plot twist of all time. I refer, of course, to the ending of Tim Burton's 2000 reimagining of the Planet of the Apes. See, this is part of the trouble when you remake a movie with a plot twist. You kind of assume that everybody already knows the twist ending to the original movie, but because it's a movie with a plot twist, your remake has to have a big reveal ending as well. So rather than do the reveal ending from the first movie again, which is brilliant, because it does exactly what I said it needed to do, it makes you realize that the story was maybe not the story you thought it had been, but also that the story is really the only story that it could possibly have been. No, we're not on an alien planet which is mysteriously populated by apes who speak and speak English, moreover. The only possible explanation for what's happened here is that mankind has literally bombed himself back to the Stone Age and the apes have overtaken us in terms of evolution, which that simple reveal of the Statue of Liberty does incredibly succinctly. Although the finer points of that reveal don't stand up to too much examination, if anything's going to survive the nuclear apocalypse, it's not the Statue of Liberty. It's right where they're going to drop one of the bombs and it's made of copper. It would evaporate. And I'm fairly sure it's facing the wrong way, given what coast it's meant to be on. But never mind that. It's still one of the great all-time jaw-dropping movie reveals. And it's such a magnificently brave downbeat ending for that film. So, of course, when they come to do the reimagining, we have to have a jaw-dropping ending. But it's only jaw-dropping and then it makes no sense whatso bloody ever. Evidently, if it had gone to a sequel, they were going to start by retro-explaining what the fuck happened at the end of the first movie. And in fact, if you go away and think about it, you can kind of work out what's supposed to have happened. But a plot point that requires the audience either to go away and think about it for 45 minutes or for a whole other movie to come along to explain it is really not a great bit of screenwriting. Number four, The Others. Now this, to my mind, gets slightly unfairly overlooked in that it is overshadowed by another film which you've probably guessed is coming up on this list and which has a similar-ish kind of reveal, but it's a very, very clever twist. If you've not seen it, go see it right now, but if you have seen it and you're trying to remember what it was all about, it's Nicole Kidman and her children trapped inside a big house on the island of Jersey at the end of World War II, uh, where the Germans had been occupying but have now left. They can't leave the house because apparently the kids have got some really horrible photosensitive condition, which means they can't go outdoors. They are being plagued by weird noises and visions and apparitions. And eventually the reveal is they're dead. Our protagonists are dead. They are the ghosts. And the weird noises and apparitions are the new living family who have now moved into the house. So it's a ghost story in reverse. Something else which possibly didn't help this movie's fortunes in this country is at one point a trio of mysterious creepy servants turn up uh, who subsequently turn out to be dead as well and one of them is played by British comedy legend Eric Sykes who I guess in the rest of the world was just a creepy old guy playing a creepy old servant but everybody who saw it in this group went it's Eric Sykes number three the usual suspects now again this is one that people tend to get wrong people think that the twist at the end of the usual suspect is oh my god 
Kevin Spacey was Kaiser Soze all along. That's not the twist. Yeah, maybe Kevin Spacey has been Kaiser Soze all along. But the point is, by the end of the film, you still don't actually know if there's any such person as Kaiser Sose, or whether he is just this mythical underworld boogeyman whom Kevin Spacey's character, whatever he's really called, has invented in order to generate fear around himself. The actual twist is this. What that film does is cleverly manipulate the audience's understanding of the language of cinema to make us think we've been seeing things that we haven't actually been seeing. Because when Charles Palminteri's cop suddenly realises that elements in verbal kid's story have been drawn from all the things around him in the room, you realise that what we've been watching was not necessarily events. What we were watching was a depiction of a story that one character was telling to another one. But given that we now know that this character was the most unreliable of narrators, we have literally no idea how much, if any, of the film actually happened. And that's the twist of The Usual Suspects. It doesn't, unlike most twists, present you with new information. It takes all the information you thought you had away and leaves you hopelessly adrift. Number two, inevitably, The Sixth Sense. This is probably the movie that introduced the whole concept of the plot twist to a whole new generation. There hadn't really been a good twist ending for a long time when this came out. And you've got to say, for all that this slightly blighted M. Night Shyamalan's career and made him the twist guy to a greater degree than anyone before him with the possible exception of Chubby Checker, and meant that he started putting twists into movies that didn't need them, uh, that didn't really work that well. This is genuinely one of the best executed twists of all time. The twist itself is actually not that clever when you think about it, and watching the movie the second time, it's very heavily telegraphed. But what's so perfect about the execution is two things. One, again, the movie exploits your subconscious understanding of the language of cinema to make you think you've seen things that you haven't actually seen. Because when it is revealed, and yeah, we all know this by now, surely, when it is revealed that Bruce Willis's child psychiatrist character has been dead the whole time, your first reaction upon this reveal is to think, no, hang on, we've seen him interacting with other characters. And then the movie just brazenly reruns all those scenes, and you realize, oh no, wait, he wasn't interacting with anybody else. We just thought he was because he thought he was. And also, it's one of those perfectly timed reveals, a perfectly timed twist reveal, should give you just enough information to figure it out for yourself literally about 10 seconds before the movie tells you what the twist is. So you get a little burst of satisfaction just before the reveal. And this movie pulls that off perfectly. All right, number one, in many respects, the daddy of all of this, Psycho. Now, of course, Psycho has the big twist reveal at the end. Norman is an Oedipal nutcase and Mother is just a figment of his imagination. But what's glorious about Psycho is that this is a movie that consists almost entirely of twists. My late dad used to go on about Psycho a great deal and he used to point out that while it is fairly tame in comparison with most of the slasher flicks it directly and indirectly spawned, it's very difficult to describe the impact it had on an audience seeing it for the first time in 1960 that had literally never seen anything like it. Because it delights in pulling the rug out from under you at every possible opportunity. The plotting is incredibly audacious. The story of about the first half hour, 40 minutes of the film is completely irrelevant. For the first half hour or so of that movie, it's about a woman who impulsively steals a lot of money from her employer and goes on the run. That's the plot of Psycho for the first half hour or so. And then she gets hacked to death in a motel toilet. And suddenly it's a movie about a maniac who hacks people to death in motel toilets. The disorienting effect of the shower scene on the audience that saw it for the first time is almost unimaginable when seen through modern eyes. First of all, that's Janet Lee. She's the star of the film. She's on the poster. She's got top billing. And we're only half an hour in, and she's dead on a toilet floor. Secondly, the atmosphere is just so oppressive. This is Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock makes big, widescreen, technical, and romantic thrillers. Not scabby little black and whites about people being hacked to death in motel toilets. And thirdly, that's not how people got murdered in movies in 1960. Particularly not women. You didn't get 
hacked to death while helpless and naked in a shower, even if, by modern standards, it's actually very tastefully shot. As everybody knows, you never actually see the knife touch the flesh. It was still way more than audiences were prepared for at the time. And so now your nerves are jangling and there's another hour of this movie left and you have no idea where the hell it's going to go. But oh look, it's good old Martin Balsam playing the big two-fisted private eye. He'll sort this out. He'll for the... Oh, fucking hell, he's dead as well. And so now you have literally no idea what's going on. So that by the time you get to the big reveal... Norman carries his mother's corpse around with him and has conversations with it and dresses up in wig and penny to go and murder anybody who is a rival for mother's affections in Norman's mind by the time you get to that reveal, which, let's face it, is ruined a bit by having the police psychiatrist come in and literally spell it out word for word. It's kind of the Harry Potter ending. By the time you get to that reveal, y y your nerves are raw. You're totally disoriented. It's an extraordinarily audacious bit of filmmaking. And even today, it kind of works. All right, those are possibly my five favorite movie twists, although I know the minute I hit stop record, I'm going to think of another six or seven that I really should have included. I'm not going to do the dishonorable mention. I already did it. It was the new Planet of the Apes. That one sucked. But please tell me about your favorite movie twists in the comments, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please hit like and share. If you'd like to see more, please hit subscribe. And if you'd like to help me make more, please visit patreon.com slash mitchben.